Great, thanks, Evan. So what is it that we always tell everybody, right? Our tagline is that we're people of action. This is the promise that we make. This is the promise that we make to the world. When poll surveys show that people join Rotary to have an impact on their community, they want to do the service. So that's what we should be sharing with them, service. The second reason people join Rotary is to meet new people and to socialize. Now, why do you think people leave Rotary? People leave Rotary because of the club environment and unmet expectations. The Rotary of 1905 is not still relevant in the community today, is it? The goal of sharing online is to help others share in the experience of being a Rotarian. Our hope is to motivate others to join our clubs, our work, or even just come along with a project. But if you were to look at your websites and your social media profiles, are you really sharing the best of yourself? Are we sharing the best of ourselves? So let me ask you a question, Evan, which Rotary Club would you like to join? Uh, well, I think the, the obvious is the, is the top, is uh, up the top of this image, you've got Rotary in action, and then the image below, it's Rotary in action. Um, so I, I would like to, to be involved in a club uh, at the top there who, uh, you know, by looking at that uh, image, you can tell they're actually doing something. You know, they're making something or they're building something, they're getting their hands dirty, they're getting involved. And these are the sorts of images that we like to see on social media with, with you know, there's something happening. Now, the image uh, at the bottom here, um, no offense to the gentleman pictured there, but, uh, you know, this this photograph, obviously, they're selling, looks like they're selling raffer tickets or they're doing something there, but there's no engagement. Um, so, uh, for example, if the gentleman at the bottom there, perhaps whoever took that photograph, asked them to sort of smile or look at the camera or, you know, put their arms around each other. This is obviously pre-COVID, but post-COVID. Um, give a thumbs up or something along those lines, then... Uh, you know, at least it's kind of, it's just it's sort of engaging, you know, there's something happening there. Um, but certainly with the above image, um, you know, it's telling a story that something is actually happening. They're doing something and you, you're in, you, it's piqued your interest. Well, what's going on here? What are they building? And so hopefully the caption that you use along with your image, you know, is going to tell that story. Whoops. All right. Well, there we go. Evan, this is all you. Oh, okay. Um, so it, it, another thing that we see on social media a lot too is that, uh, uh, you know, audience loves visuals. Social media is a visual medium. So posts that include images, um, they produce sort of that higher engagement. And so here's this little first little tip from, from, from now on going forward uh, for when you use uh, social media um, for your Rot Rotary Club's pages. Uh, never just uh, uh, post text anymore always make sure there is a, a photograph or at least a, a graphic or, or a, a cartoon or whatever. Make sure there is something that goes along with your, with your post. So um, always include a photograph um, because, you know, more people are likely to, you know, buy or view a product or something like that if they see, if they're scrolling past it. And so these two particular images that I'm using, this is of my friend Gay uh, from, from Rotary Down Under magazine here in Australia. And uh, this, see the top image is with her award. You can tell, oh, look, she doesn't look like she's, you know, you know, overly excited for receiving that award. And that's something that we normally would see on social media is when we're presenting awards or gifts or something along those lines, you know, we'll have the usual, you know, people up standing in a lineup like they're the usual suspects, so to speak. And, you know, it's sort of a photograph that we'll see all the time. People look, you know, happy, of course, or a little bit interested, whatever. But, you know, people will scroll on past from, uh, you know, for, to the next social media post. So what we want to do is capture the people's attention. So it just takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of time from going from the top image down to the bottom image. 
And so it's just a case of perhaps asking the, 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 the awardee, you know, you put the award on the table and ask them to lean over a little bit or have that big happy smile. You know, in some respects, staging a photograph can be really useful in this regard. And so just think about yourself, um, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about it as well, is that, you know, Facebook and, and Instagram and all our social media accounts, they are essentially our own Rotary Club's um, um, media um, company so to speak you know the you know we, we these are our local newspapers so to speak you know we can't rely on um, the local newspapers putting in our stories so we have become the storytellers ourselves but to do that we've got to make sure that the imagery and things that we actually put out on social media would be the sort of imagery that you would expect to find on the front page of a of a newspaper you know because you want people to buy the newspaper you want people to open up and read it so what we put out there is it is incredibly important that it shows us in a professional light and uh but also have some fun and all the rest of it as well so um moving on to our next slide pictures tell that story and so what story are you wanting to tell and uh we we with the image that you're looking at now um i'm not sure why the guys have got the blue dots over their faces because i i i'll be honest I lifted the photo and I didn't want anybody to feel embarrassed. So I just covered their faces. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I was going to say, actually, that's not too bad. That's an interesting photograph. Cause I'm sure if I was going to be like, why, why are these dudes got blues on their faces for? That's actually quite an interesting, uh, an interesting thing. But the, the point that, that we're making here is, is that the check presentation. So um, I'm going to be as blunt as possible. Let's not do this anymore. Let's not do the big check presentations. Now, because who pays by check anymore, except Rotary Clubs who are giving out large novelty checks? It's a cliche. You know, we have all done it before. So we need to think of new ways on how we can express, certainly from a visual point of view, how we give large amount of money. Um, and uh, I think there was something on the on the Rotary Graphics group that was posted a little bit earlier this week by, uh, I think I saw people have you know, gave, uh, you know, $10,000 and what they did is they printed out each number on a piece of paper and they got the club to hold that little piece of paper. And so it spelled out you know, $10,000. That was pretty good. So, um, you know, we, we need to tell these stories. We need to tell these stories that are going to capture someone's attention for that short amount of time. So, you know, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds is plenty of time to be able to uh, see an image and get someone to stop scrolling past and, and obviously get them to be involved further. And another image that we see f quite often on social media um, is the below image that you can see on your screen now and it's photographs from a meeting you know it's the backs of people's heads so if, I, if i'm going to push any point th that is the particular photo that we really don't want to see anymore because no one is interested in seeing the back of your head except someone perhaps who you know hairdressers perhaps or someone who might you know find the cure for baldness or something along those lines. So we don't want to see the backs of people's heads because sorry. it's not. Uh, uh, I moved. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're right. Um, because it's not engaging. It's not engaging. If you're going to take photographs from a meeting, um, perhaps uh, go around the table and ask people to look at the camera, you know, get action thumbs up or, you know, get involved a little bit too or if you are going to take photographs from a meeting you know maybe uh, maybe for that ask the president or whatever for that brief period of time to get everybody to look towards you and do something you know something a little bit a little bit uh, uh, engaging um, we really need to steer clear of these sorts of photographs that do get used um, by a lot of uh, Rotarians on the social media pages from, from nearly every country. So it's not just uh, one particular area. So let's get away from just taking photographs of meetings because meetings aren't going to get people involved in Rotary. People are going to want to be involved by seeing what we're actually doing, seeing the action, the action shots, people in action. So let's, let's kind of figure out what story we are trying to tell. So I do want to address, there's two, um, there's two statements in the chat box. One is from Sherry, who's asking, what do we do instead? I just received permission from my club to order a check. So you can still use the big checks, but I would make the photos really fun. I mean, really fun. Do something different, not the handing over the check and the handshake. Um, maybe everybody could be jumping up and down or I, I don't know something just something different aside from the 
here's your check photo. Um, the other point that came up was um, Sherry, yeah, Sherry had said that she uh, photographs the back or sides of children so that they are not identifiable, which uh, depending upon, you know, the regulations and whether or not you have releases makes a lot of sense. So I do understand that. Um, um, if I can just pipe, sure. pipe in there too, Melissa, in regards to checks as well. Here, here's an interesting thought, which is definitely going to get people engaged. If you have um, your the big check presentation and you've got other people behind you and everyone's smiling and the check is upside down, I can guarantee you guarantee you that people will comment the check is upside down and if they comment that that's great because that means they've actually stopped for that two seconds to look at your image and the more people who comment to remind you of the fact that the check is upside down means more people are going to engage with you they're going to see it and it's all part of your secret plan you know some things like when you're putting up perhaps for a graphic and you intentionally put a spelling mistake people just can't help themselves but to tell you that they've they've spotted the mistake and that's great because that means that they've actually read it and they've actually stopped to engage to comment to say that so sometimes little mistakes can be kind of intentional so think about that you know if you put the check upside down you post the photograph people comment on there and then you follow that up maybe 10 minutes later or something like that with the actual you know check the other way around so um, think about um, you know the quirkiness of your photograph and sometimes an intentional mistake can actually be can actually be of benefit sometimes too so and a super good point that just came up is that instead of showing a picture of the check show a picture of what the check bought right mm. so if you were working with a food bank you can have photos of food uh, if you're working with a shelter maybe you can take pictures of the of the outside of the building so if you show what the check actually purchased, it's really much more of an action photo. It's a much more engaging photo. All right, so none of this is hard. That's what I really want you to know. None of this is hard. Most people walk around with your phone in your pocket. And while you are engaged in a project or you're doing something with your fellow Rotarians, just take out your phone and take a bunch of photos. They do not need to be staged. Candids can be fabulous. Walk around your event or your project. Um, don't just take pictures, you know, of people sitting at tables. Uh, make sure that, you know, you're taking different angles. You know, bring your phone way up in the air and take a, a photo from, you know, up top or the opposite right? Crouch down and maybe take a photo from, you know, just use some fun angles and enjoy it. From there, right, you would just use the Facebook app or the Instagram app. Uh, and then you can post it right to your personal profile. Um, and if you post it publicly, and then you tag your Rotary Club, the administrator for your Rotary Club's page should see it and we'll be able to share it and then get even more engagement on it. Um, one thing that I did want to know, want you to know is that now so many clubs are using Zoom and other video conferencing. You can live stream those on Facebook or YouTube directly. Um, so if you're holding your meeting and you have a really good speaker coming in, why not live stream your meeting to your Facebook page. And yes, always include an impact statement. People love numbers. We raised, you know, $10,000 or we fed a thousand people. Um, you know, we helped X number of, of homeless get into a shelter. Those definitely matter. Um, oh, it, Evan, it, it, what is this? Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> so when we talk about quirky photos, so this is this is me pointing out to Alexis, my good friend Alexis, that her tattoo, her real tattoo, uh, doesn't meet the branding guidelines. So <laughs> she kind of told, told she told me exactly what I can do with my opinion. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, the the best photo, photograph uh, uh, taking techniques. It's always the the stuff that's you know that's um, you know with, with the great thing about the phone cameras and all the rest of it is that we're not restricted to thirty five millimeter film. And I mean, I who, who, God, when was the last time anyone used thirty five millimeter film? So it's always important to take as many photos as possible. You know, um, get creative with the angles, uh, better lights, better photos. Um, don't cut off limbs or heads necessarily, you know, uh, focus on what you can tap on your phone, focus on, uh, on, you know, what you want to focus on, but make sure there's that fun element involved. And so, you know, that spontaneity is always great. I think the best things that I see on social media, the things that, um, make me think, oh, oh, geez, that's unusual. I don't often see that for, from Rotarians. You know, I've kind of got that that view in my head of what the what Rotarians and what we sort of get up to. So sometimes when it's a little bit outside the box, it's great. And so I've seen, you know, some of these I love rotary glasses or I love rotary glasses, um, you know, that or if you're wearing your rotary shirts or if you're partaking in some kind of a, a challenge or something like that. Um, it's always great to show off that that sort of interesting side and you know then you can relate that comment to what the photograph is all about so you engage with that conversation so never be afraid to um to sort of get out there and start snapping and um even um even uh, there's nothing wrong with a selfie every now and again um you know we can all, we can all do selfies so and really what you're doing is when you have a fabulous photo, a really great engaging photo, it gives you an opportunity to create a conversation. You can ask questions. Posts that end with a question mark instead of a period actually generate twice as many likes and comments and shares because you are taking the time to be able to find out from other people what it is that they're interested in, what they like ask people what kind of impact would you like to have on your community you might get some fabulous answers that could bring the next project to your club ask people if you could help anyone right now who would that be and or just invite people who might be if you're working on a project hey would you like to come and help and show pictures of some of your members and some of the things that they're involved in Oh, so now after asking a question, your job is to listen. And now more than ever, there's a lot of people in our communities that are hurting, that need understanding and need compassion, right? So pay attention to the responses that you get and make sure that you just don't let people hang. So don't ask a question and then just let a bunch of people answer and never re-engage in the conversation. Respond to at least half of whatever you get. Um, and, and also too- oh, um, Go ahead, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say with, um, with, with that, uh, Sometimes it's actually better off too. And here's, here's the second tip that, I, that I'd like to give in that, in that regard as well. So for, for the photograph at the top there, it looks like um, there's some food that's being donated or something like that, which is awesome. Um, don't overload your Facebook pages with hundreds of photographs from that one event because I guarantee you no one is going to go through them all. So if you're my, my for per post, my recommendation would be a max of about three photographs, or if you can explain it all in one photograph, one photograph, one, the best photograph that you've taken, then use that one photograph because people don't really click through albums and, you know, uh, it just, yeah, it just, it just decreases your impact on what you're trying to, to, to convey. So, um, and always make sure that, you know, with the photograph that you're, you're, you're talking about, you, there's either the sort of two th schools of thought on this. One is that the photograph is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so, you know, there's food that's being donated and you can understand, yes, that's food that's being donated. The second one is the image at the bottom here. Now, I could only assume that these... Uh, these are the Rotarians here with that big rotary wheel. They're obviously, uh, looks like they're re redecorating that wheel to make it meet the branding guidelines. Of course, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but the, the point is, is that, um, you know, I don't know what they're doing with that wheel besides holding up a plumb bob or whatever they, whatever they were a, a spirit level. Um, you know, what, 
what's going on here? What are they doing? And so that's where you piques your interest and you want to know more about that. So yeah, there's two schools of thought. A photograph that makes a lot of sense and you instantly understand what's going on. And then the photograph, which is a little bit quirky, a little bit weird, and you're like, mm, okay, well, what's going on here? Uh, you know, if I read the comments or if I read the caption a bit more or if I engage a little bit more, I'm going to find out or find the answer to it. So um, um, I did see one quick question that's just come up from the Zoom chat. It says, do you have to place our club logo on the photos? Uh, no, you don't. Um, if you do, that's great because that means you've kind of you personalised it a little bit. You've put your own little club watermark on there, but not necessarily. There's no real you know, um, reason to do that. Um, if I was taking photographs of, of um, uh, Rotarians and different things in action, um, I would always make sure I would try to include the wheel somewhere, not necessarily as a watermark, but perhaps if they're wearing their Rotary Club shirt, try and take that photograph and, and if I can get the wheel in a little bit, that's great. Or if, you know, if there's a marquee or something that has the rotary wheel and your club logo on there, you know, you sort of take the photograph from a, from a low angle, get the people smiling, but make sure you get the rotary wheel in the background. That's that kind of subliminal messaging, which we can put through. Um, but also too, remembering as, 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 as before we, we go on, Melissa, it's, it'll be, it's um, important for me to make um, in regards to the, to, to the rotary logo, as we all know, the logo changed seven or so years ago. Um, they're now clamping down quite heavily on, on the use of photographs from certainly from Rotary International's point of view. So they're very discouraging using photographs that, that show the old logo, particularly on shirts or things like that. So, um, you know, make sure that uh, if we are going to be putting out, the photographs and we are going to be including you know our logos and things like that let's hopefully that it's going to be the the, the correct one because if, if we are all using the same if we're all on the same page it makes us all look good so i want to address um you don't necessarily need permission to use a community member in your pictures so if you're all at an event typically what i do is when i walk around with my camera I will say, hey, I'm taking some photos. Is there anybody here who does not want to be on social media? Um, and I'll note that, and I will make sure that I don't get any photos of them. But you do not necessarily need explicit permission. Um, of course, if you're dealing with minors, then you definitely need a release. But uh, for the most part, if you're all together building a playground and you're taking photos of people in action and doing work, um, you do not need explicit um, permission. Um, and it's a good uh, uh, topic or uh, point you made may mention there, Melissa, too. If you're at community events, um, you know, um, it's if you or your club members yourselves don't feel all that comfortable, perhaps with pho photography, things like that, a great thing, and certainly during this COVID-19 stuff, is, you know, reach out to um, professional photographers in your community and pay them. Pay them to come to your event and uh, take photographs for you. So hopefully the photos that they you, they take, you're able to, at a later date, you, you know, use on social media, but it actually creates some marketing collateral for you. So if you get the photographer and you give them the brief that you want photos, graphs of, you know, people enjoying the fun at a community event, photographs of the club members in, in having fun and doing different things. It means that the photographs that get taken, you're probably then able to use at different specific times for the rest of the year or whatever else like that if you if you feel you need to. And also, there's nothing wrong with your club um, uh, putting up a, a little bit of a, a release form. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of templates that are available on Google or wherever you, you can search for them and you can modify them to suit your club's needs. But sometimes it is can be a worthwhile thing having um, a bit of a release form, particularly if you're, you're dealing with minors, so um, interact and all that other sort of stuff. It's good to sort of, you know, uh, get get those sorts of forms done, and it's very easy to for your club to sort of make them up. I don't believe Rotary International themselves have got a, any forms like that, but um, I would check with uh, with you know the legalities of that. But uh, I certainly know clubs in my own district have uh, have little forms that they've got that they uh, you know, get permission to be able to post photographs uh, further. So, so Brian makes a really great point. Um, if you have a big, huge story, you've just finished a project, um, you want to get into a lot of detail about it, that's a great post for your website. So you can tell the whole big story on your website, um, you can add a couple of photos to it, and then you can copy and paste and use the link on your Facebook page with maybe two or three different photos um, and tell a little bit about the story 
and have that link so that people can go back to your website and check out the entire story. Um, in social media, one of the things that I always teach is that your website is basically home base. That's where you have the most control of the conversation. And using Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram, these are all the outposts, right? So you're using these outposts to be able to drive traffic back to your website because that's where people are going to learn more about your club. That's probably where you have a contact form, um, you have maybe other events listed, um, People can learn about your history, uh, some other types of things that you're into, like what the club always works on. So um, doing all these things and creating that engagement, ultimately, right, you're not creating engagement for the sake of engagement. You're creating engagement because you want to get people interested in your club. So if you can drive traffic back to your website where maybe they could fill out a contact form or something like that, then you're hitting a home run. Um, so, Doug, yes, you can have people send you pictures from the event, and then you would be able to pick out the best ones. Um, you know, if you're happy with sharing your email address or Facebook Messenger, what I find even to be um, better is you just ask people to post the photos up on Facebook or on Instagram. Use a hashtag. Have them tag your Facebook page, because then their friends... Um, their friends get to learn about the club. And these are people that maybe you can't reach, right? So if Evan and I are connected on Facebook, but I'm not connected to Mark, and Evan comes to my club and does a project, and he posts that up on his Facebook page, and he and Mark are friends, then Mark is gonna see that, and he might want to check out our Rotary Club. So it's sort of that, they, you know, viralness, um, that allows clubs to be able to become known. So this is um, Evan's favorite subject, branding. <laughs> I, I probably flout the rules more than anyone else in Rotary, <laughs> in Rotary World. Gosh. Actually, it's probably always, it's always best to ask the rule breaker about these things. Um, so with the branding, so um, uh, when I was on the, the, uh, the Rotary International Communications Committee, um, the, we were the committee that came up with the, uh, the, the People of Action campaign. And so um, there's a photograph of John Smarge there. Uh, so um, we've got to make sure we use the branding center and, and, and you know, Rotary's brand is bigger than the wheel. You know, it's a perception. It's, it's how others think about us. It's not just how we see ourselves. So as the, the Rotary brand, the basic qualities and goals that unite us all as Rotary clubs, it's what we have to offer, who we partner with, how our identity and our vision, our essence and our values. It's to create lasting positive change. Okay, so uh, what that means is that the, the um, Rotary International came up with the People of Action campaign and they've got, um, you can, you can add the watermark over your photographs on uh, uh, you go to the brand center on the, the, the my rotary website to do that and there is also another app um, which has been created in conjunction with rotary international and has got rotary international approval to be able to um, make it a little bit easier to do do it from your app as well sorry from your phone uh, and i'll while melissa's speaking about something else i can quickly find that information and post that in the chat uh but the the point of this is is that you know it, it's it's using your own photographs to create a campaign and so the different words that uh, that have been come up is you know together we empower together we in polio together we fight hunger uh you know together we um, um uh, mentor the different sort of uh words or slides that can go along with your photographs. Now, we don't necessarily have to put the branding on like the People of Action campaign on every photograph we use on social media, but sometimes it's great to have that backup and to be a part of this campaign. And if you, you know, you use the hashtag People of Action and it just kind of reiterates that point that we're trying to make to the That's why with this photograph of John, uh, you know, um, obviously whatever he's giving out from the box there, you know, that's just great. That's not really, you know, doesn't really tell too much of the story, but you add that together we empower and then it sort of just, 
you know, makes that photograph look that just that extra little bit professional too. So um, it, it can be certainly useful. And I do encourage you all, um, if you haven't already, to get involved in the um, the, the People of Action campaign. And um, one thing I do see though, which I, I, I must admit, is that the campaign has been created for people to use. Um, so making sure that we, the images that we use match the professionalism of the campaign. I, I will, I have seen people have taken screenshots of Zoom meetings and you know, the, all the Zoom faces looks like we're in the Brady Bunch or something like that. And they'll use the People of Action campaign over the top. And that doesn't necessarily translate into what the campaign's talking about. So um, I would, I mean, it's still, I mean, you know, I can't say um, anything bad that the good for them to still use it. But, you know, we've got to make sure that the imagery that we're putting out there is, is you know, is enough to get people's attention, as I said, is enough to appear in the front page of a newspaper. So, you know, we've always got to have that in the back of our minds. So a lot of times people ask about the wheel, the legacy wheel, the, the uh, mark of excellence. So the way I like to explain it is um, if you imagine all the Rotary Clubs around the world as a big quilt, right? Each of them has their own personality. They have their own things that they're into. Um, but the one thing that ties us all together is that logo, right? So, and anywhere you go, if we're all using the same logo, anywhere you go, somebody's going to be able to say, oh, hey, yeah, I've seen that before. These are people that, you know, people of action, people that they help the community. Um, Rotary's brand is much bigger than the wheel. It's a perception, right? And it's up to us to create the perception that we want people to have of us. Um, if you ask around your local community, what do people think of Rotary? Is it empowerment? Is it connecting? Is it education? Those are the things that we really need to be looking at. So thinking ahead, I want you to, um, you know, we all understand that uh, currently uh, things are a little different than we're used to. So in a post-COVID world, we still, we have to relate to our communities, but maybe a little differently. Um, their needs may have changed. People may be hesitant to help in person. So maybe we can give them virtual opportunities to engage with your club. Um, has your club tried a virtual fundraiser? Um, using Zoom, again, to live stream your meeting to your Facebook page. Um, those types of things. Uh, when we did uh, projects with the local food banks, um, we had our social distancing, everybody had masks on, everybody had gloves on. So if you know people who want to come out and help like that, um, you, have to be, you have to provide them with their PPE. You're going to have to um, make sure that you know, they are safe and comfortable. And also there's a lot of non-for-profits out there right now that are banging their drum because getting attention now everybody's focused on COVID, everybody's focused on the recovery, um, but there are still other needs that need to be met within the community. So ask yourself, how is your community, how is your club engaged with your community during the pause? And have you had to change any of your plans or your goals uh, during this Rotary year as a result, right? I know that we have canceled our major fundraiser for the year, which is a karaoke night. Uh, and it's usually in a jam packed room and people are running around and drinking and having a ball. But right now we don't see ourselves living in a place where something like that is going to be possible. So we're replacing it with a barbecue, but it's to go. So people come, they grab their dinner uh, and then you know they move on. Uh, I don't know if we'll be as successful, we can hope, but um, at least we're trying to think of things that we can do to raise money and still, um, you know, still be able to be there for the community. So here we have some Facebook best practices, but I want Evan to tell you about the photo. 
Um, okay, so this 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 is one of my uh, most favourite photographs um, that I've ever found with when I for, in Rotary, um, and I use it all, in all my presentations. And I never can never go past without talking about it because to me it's, it's just it's it's exactly what we're trying to encapsulate. So when you look at this photograph, you think to yourself, why is there a guy holding a fish above a, above his head, and how come there looks like a twelve foot tall Indian man? He's about to kiss it. So this is from the Rotary Club of Woolgulga. Woolgulga in uh, in New South Wales, and it's a small community town. But uh, each year there is a, a pelagic spearfishing competition, and so uh, you know the town gets overrun by people from all around the world and professional spearfishers, and they descend on the little town of Woolgulga, and uh, the, the the spearfishers go out and spear the fish and participate in the competition, and then the fish that gets uh, caught is then donated uh, back to um, uh, the Rotary Club and the Rotary Club auctioned the fish off to do an alive uh, fish auction. So you've got the gentleman, John at the front, uh, sorry, George at the front there holding the uh, the fish and, and John Arkin's the man at the back there is the auctioneer. But this is the sort of photograph that caught my eye. You know, I'm scrolling on Facebook. Oh, there's something different. Uh, look, there's another cat photograph. Uh, oh, what's this? What's the go with the fish? Um, you know, so it, it, then I inquired about it and then when I found out more oh, information. How are you doing? Oh, something else. Is there we go. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, it, it, these are the sorts of quirky images that I think work really well. And if we think like this or emulate something like this, uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, we could uh, get, get some engagement. I know Rotary Clubs in Australia, um, back when we can do, then we did these barbecue sausage sizzles. Maybe you can hold a sausage above our head or something along those lines. But um, the, the point I'm trying to make with this Facebook best practices is, and, and these are some great tips is it's the whole point is using fun and engaging photographs, you know, post regularly. I'm not saying like do what I do and post, you know, every day or twice a day sometimes, but post regularly, at least three times a week, making sure there's a photograph to go along with it. So it could be a case of the photograph you use might be your, um, your next uh, speaker, um, or it could be your, you know, personal information about, you know, your, uh, one of your club members has, uh, uh, you know, got any grandchild or something along those lines or blah, 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 blah. Um, you can schedule posts throughout the week, which means you don't have to sit at your computer every day to think of something new. You can maybe on a Sunday afternoon, schedule a few things to go out. Um, you know, you can ask members for photo contests. You can ask, and this is really important, ask your members to like and share the photographs from your own club page to their own personal profiles. You can tag other community organizations in these photographs. And, um, even though I said earlier about not having so many photographs on one post, you can create an album for a project or a fundraiser and you can post that on Facebook, but be specific that, you know, here is the album for our event so that you're not just, just randomly posting it without any context. So these are my sort of the best practices that I've thought of for, for Facebook. Uh, but again, look at the photograph here it's something out of the ordinary you can see there's a little rotary wheel um this is a, a an old photograph too so um but you can see there's a little rotary wheel in there as well and it's it's you know it's that kind of that image that i would think would probably you know appear on the front page of a newspaper without a doubt i do want to point out that um your club should have more than one admin on their facebook page um god forbid uh, the person who is the admin of your Facebook page should leave the club for any reason or whatever. Uh, you want to be able to maintain control within the club. Uh, there's more than one club that's had to start a second Facebook page because they completely lost control of the one that they had. So that's just sort of a, not photo related, but still equally important. But um, also too, Melissa, as well, is that um, don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money on on uh, promoting posts through Facebook as well. Um, as a sponsored post, you can spend as little as ten dollars. You can spend as much as a thousand. So sometimes, if you've got a great photograph like this, and and or um, you know you want to tell that story, it's it doesn't hurt to throw a little bit of money at that, and you can specifically target those people who you want to reach in your own community or whatever. And that means that that photograph is definitely going to appear in their 
than uh, Facebook news feeds, and they might not necessarily uh, uh, gravitate towards your Rotary Club in, in normal circumstances, but they would if they see that that post. So, you know, don't be afraid to uh, to put a bit of money in uh, marketing money into um, into Facebook. So Instagram, right? Um, on Instagram, you can create a business page that can connect to your Facebook page. And that gives you the ability to be able to post and schedule from Facebook. So that makes life so much easier. Um, use inspiring captions, right? Let people know what's going on. Hashtags. Also, hashtags are starting to become really popular on Facebook. So I suggest that you use two or three hashtags on a post on Facebook, but in Instagram, you can use 10 to 15 hashtags and it won't look spammy because that's what everybody else is doing. Uh, and make sure your bio has a link to your club website. Um, make sure your account is public for the Rotary Club. Uh, you can use both photos and videos and pay attention to what people are liking and, and um, following on your page. Uh, then you'll have a better idea what to be able to, you know, what to post uh, to continue the engagement. You can also use the app tag, uh, much like you can on Facebook, to be able to tag other people and organizations um, and post with purpose, right? So you don't just post on, you know, I mean, if you wanna share what you're having for breakfast on your personal page, go ahead. Uh, but maybe not so much on your uh, club's Facebook page. And again, um, Evan, these are fabulous photos. Yeah, uh, I'll talk, really talk about them, but I just saw a question that just came up from, from Paul Rogers, um, who's not too, doesn't live too far away from me. Uh, Paul, um, what is a hashtag and how do you use them on Facebook? So what a hashtag is it turns it into a searchable word term. So hashtag people of action, which means if you post that up on Facebook and people click on that, people of action they then are able to see other people who've used that same hashtag so um, it's it's it makes it a searchable word term so it can be quite good particularly if you have um, you say your own community event for example say you know rotary barbecue 2020 or something along those lines um, you know if you encourage people to use that hashtag when you're looking for photos yourself or when you're seeing how how you know how much social media reached that particular photograph or whatever has been is gone you can see oh okay other people have used that same uh, uh, hashtag as well and you can see what they've been posting as well so um you know it, it, it really is a very useful tool um so instagram yeah look um i've got in my instagram account rotarian evan burrell on instagram and uh you know um, one of the great things about Instagram too is that it, it, it has some filters on there. And so what I'm trying to uh, tell with a top photograph, and you, I'm sure you all recognize um, past uh, Rotary National President Barry Rasson. Um, I took this photograph of Barry uh, at, at Evanston when he was the president and uh, he was keen in, to get involved with a silly um, filter. So, you know, if the president of Rotary International can have fun, uh, I think he's given us permission uh, for us all to sort of not take our so seriously and some of you who follow me on social media would definitely know that I don't take myself so seriously so you know it's sometimes it can be fun to show the fun side of us we're all human we all you know we're all involved in, in in rotary and a lot of us are you know serious about rotary as I am but we don't have to take it so seriously we can have a little bit of fun with it so you know um, uh, you know together we have fun and I think that's the key to our messaging is what we put out on social media always has to have that kind of happiness. And, and of course, you know, there'll be some issues that, that won't be necessarily happy, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that we're an organization of people who are in it together. We want to have fun together. And that's kind of the image that we want to put out so that we can attract people who want to come along to that. So, um, you know, don't be afraid of having fun. So and one of the questions that came up is that why would you post on Facebook and Instagram? And in a second, the next slide is about LinkedIn. It's because you're reaching different people, right? So I am not connected to the same group of people on LinkedIn and Instagram that I am on Facebook. Um, and you're also reaching a different demographic. So the demographic for Facebook tends to be more like 40s, 50s and up, uh, whereas the Instagram demographic is more like 20s, 30s, um, and a LinkedIn demographic is um, does span ages, but has a little bit of a different tone. So 
What's kind of interesting is when you do posts, even if you use the same photo in three different posts on three different networks, you want to change the comments a little bit. You want to change what you're saying a little bit so that you're not just kind of copying and pasting across the board. Um, and also you can post those things at different times, right? So maybe I'll post on Facebook at nine o'clock in the morning, but I'm gonna post at Instagram at seven o'clock at night, and I'm gonna post on LinkedIn at noon, right? Um, so Dorothy, yes, you can make a LinkedIn page for your Rotary Club under your own personal account. Um, um, go ahead. I was saying, Melissa, what you were just backing up what you were saying, Melissa, too. So it could be the same subject that you're talking about, but the photograph that you use is that little bit different. So, you know, for example, you could have photographed just like your face like this. This is for, for, for Instagram. And then the photograph like that is for Facebook. And then the photograph like that is for LinkedIn. So it's the same subject, but you've just, you know, it's just a little bit different. And as you, as you say, the caption's a little bit different for each social media platform. And there's nothing wrong with us being on various different social media platforms. Um, so from, from a club's perspective, it can be a little bit hard. So I would suggest, you know, stick to Instagram and Facebook and maybe look at LinkedIn. But from your own personal accounts, um, this, and what I try to encourage is that, you know, we all should be proud to be Rotarians. So should we, we should all be able to post on, on our own personal things, uh, personal social media accounts, you know, that we're, you know, we're proud to be in Rotary and uh, you know, you might want to use TikTok if you're interested in TikTok videos, which is a good way to do things or Snapchat or, you know, there's a various different social media accounts out there and there's nothing wrong with being on them all. Um, of course, you know, you just need to work out what works best for you. What photographs that you're posting are, are the ones that are engaging. So if you're getting a lot of traffic on Facebook and Instagram, maybe focus a bit more on that. But if you're getting some some uh, people loving your TikTok videos, then maybe, you know, look at that, um, focus a bit more energy on that. But ultimately what we're trying to do with all the, all the stuff that we're putting out on social media and our photographs, all the rest of it, is if you can look at the, the my screen is that we want people to, you know, ask me about Rotary. That's the whole point of what we're doing it. That's the whole point. What I do is that we want people to ask us the questions about why, why you're in Rotary. Why are you doing this for? How can I be involved? You know, the, the stuff that we're putting out there, it's, it's for a purpose. It's for a purpose. And the purpose is, is to get um, the eyes on, on Rotary, people interested in it. So to answer a quick question from Dorothy is that, yes, you can click post to Instagram when you're posting on the Facebook page. But if you use the Creator Studio to be able to um, make your posts, uh, you would actually be able to change the words a little bit and you can schedule them out so that they're different. And you're still, the whole thing still happens a lot in um, all that happens in Facebook. So uh, LinkedIn. Now LinkedIn is not necessarily one of the tools that a lot of people talk about. You can create a quote unquote company page for your club that is public. You can ask members and other people to follow and list the club's page. Um, one of my favorite things about LinkedIn is their search functionality. So if you are looking for a former youth exchange student and you have an idea of where they might be or you have some history on them, um, you're looking for Mary Smith and she used to reside in you know, Saratoga, New York, um, you might be able to find them and reach out to them. And this would probably be a really great person to potentially bring in to your um, club, hopefully. Uh, so that's one of the things that I really like about LinkedIn is its search capabilities. Um, you can use LinkedIn groups, Rotary International. There's a large uh, Rotary International group on LinkedIn. Um, and by using a LinkedIn company page, you can actually track statistics. So there's a lot of things like um, you have a lot of people from, say, a C-suite, uh, you know, CEOs, CFOs that are looking at your page, or they're more managerial position kind of people looking at your page. And you might have ideas of um, demographics. Uh, one thing is that if you have a personal LinkedIn profile, I strongly suggest that you add causes and your volunteer experience to your profile. Um, I think my uh, Rotary coordinator position is actually like as part of my job listed. 
but then of course I also follow Rotary International um, and I have community service as some of the things that I'm interested in. Kevin, anything about LinkedIn? Um, I find LinkedIn, uh, I, I use predominantly use LinkedIn for um, rotary purposes, and, but I don't use it as much as I do Facebook. And so I'm very careful with the stuff that I do put on LinkedIn. Um, and I, I do find, yes, it, it has that kind of professional people that I'm connected with on a, from a business standpoint. So I make sure the things that I'm putting out on, on LinkedIn have that kind of that, um, you know, business type of things, you know, how people can get involved. And I find it actually quite useful. Of course, I've got my own professional background for that. Um, but it's great to, um, to leverage that with some with some other different connections that you can use. So, you know, it, it's it's a worth it's worthwhile exploring um, LinkedIn best practices, sorry, LinkedIn for your um, for your club. Um, but also don't be ashamed to post sorry, to put on your LinkedIn profiles that you are involved in Rotary and, and perhaps what roles that you hold in that as well. So it, it, it adds to the, um, it adds, it all adds a little bit of extra spice to your, to your character. Absolutely. All right. This is just a short list of some free resources. I use Canva a lot. It is uh, great for creating quick graphics. Um, you can even create the little people of action thingies on there using, um, I think it's, it's not magic marker, it's ink. Per permanent, permanent marker. Permanent marker, that's it. Using the permanent marker font um, and you can upload the rotary uh, brand and boom, you have a people of action photo. Um, the Rotary Learning Center is a great place to check out. Um, they have... Um, tutorials on membership, on public image, on any aspect of Rotary. Um, and I know that uh, a lot of people that I've pointed in that direction, uh, they're much more interactive than they used to be. They're really worthwhile and worth taking a peek at. Um, the Rotary Brand Center, where your clubs can uh, create their own logos. You can create flyers. There's a bunch of templates there for you to be able to use. Um, and the not, I wish the Rotary Showcase was used more often, um, where you can actually upload your projects and you can look for partners um, within Rotary to um, help with those projects. It's, if your neighboring club maybe is not so interested in what you're doing, maybe there's a club 20 miles away that is. But adding it to the Rotary Showcase is a huge help. Um, um, uh, go ahead. Sorry, Melissa. Um, uh, just to see a comment that's come up here from uh, Kim McDonald Wilts. Uh, she's posted the link for the uh, the People of Action campaign, the app, uh, peopleofactionphotos.com. So that's the one that has been um, given the tick of approval by RI to as an outside source to use that as well. So if you oh, look at excellent. the chat, click that, and that's I find that's a little bit easier to use than going through the main. Um, brand center because you're able to sort of adjust the size and a few different things like that as well um also in regards to canva uh, with canva you can import the the brand colors um so if you're putting out posts and if you do follow the stuff that i put out i always try to make sure that i use the official branding colors and things like that and canva gives you that opportunity and i think um uh, clubs are able to apply for free Canva accounts, professional Canva accounts through their, um, their status as a, you know, charity status or whatever else. I'm not exactly too sure the process, uh, but uh, you know, that is something that uh, clubs can look at. And because Canva has templates, you know, we, 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 the day's gone by where we're putting out, you know, terrible graphics for our, for our events. You know, it shouldn't be that hard because the templates are there and all you need to do is add your own information to that and you can put out something that's really professional and it looks really good. So, you know, I would encourage you um, all just to have a play around with Canva and, um, and see what sort of comes from that. And Canva 2.0 now, if you upload a photo to Canva, even the rotary logo, if you look under colors, it actually pulls the colors out of the photos and out of the logos and uh, makes it available right then and there. So if you're using text or if you're doing some type of an overlay, um, you have the ability to be able to match right then and there. Um, it's just, I, I can't believe how intuitive it is. I've been using it for client work as well. 
Um, the last resource is just a list of online Rotary Club meetings from around the world, which um, in today's day and age can be very useful. So if you wanna go hunt for a meeting that's on a different continent, um, go right ahead and have some fun. And it'll uh, give you an opportunity to uh, hopefully uh, get some new ideas. And uh, it's always fun being able to visit other clubs. I am gonna add the, can the People of Action app to my list though, because that sounds really fabulous. So, um, that brings us to the end of the formal presentation. Um, we've kind of gone through and we've been asking, you know, trying to keep an eye on the chat. Um, but if there's any burning questions that you have, um, be more than happy to answer them. Uh, you, if you're at a laptop or a computer, you can hit the space bar um, to be able to speak. Or if you just want to type it in the chat, go right ahead. Melissa, can I suggest that we uh, just uh, stop screen sharing so that we're able to see everybody's, you know, sort of come together. And then I suppose to also another way, if people want to ask uh, questions, I think there's that little, um, you know, you can put up the little hand or, or as you say, do the space bar and then we can sort of go from there too. That's perfect. Okay, so let me, uh, that's my last slide. Do, 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 do. And look, there's everybody. Hello. The Brady Bunch. <laughs> a big Brady Bunch. A big, or it was, I think it was from the Muppet Show too. In the Muppet Show, there's all the people in the windows on the Muppet Show too. That was also funny as well. So. so if you're raising your hand, I may not be able to see you because I have six or seven screens that I have to go through. So it would just be a whole lot easier if you just spoke up. And if there are no questions, well, that's okay too. Hi, Beth. I have a question. Sure. <clears throat> um, I've been, uh, because of you all, I've really got uh, quite interested in uh, Canva. And um, I use the, uh, the free version, but I, uh, I don't really want to pay for the pro version. I tried to get the pro version but they wanted it through a foundation rather than through Rotary. How do we get around that or do you know? Do you have a 501c3 that's associated with your club at all? Uh, yes, I, I didn't want to do that if I, I didn't have to. I was waiting to ask this question and if so, I will go that direction. Yeah, you don't have a choice. That's the direction you're gonna have to go in. It must be a, a certified 50c3. Okay, uh, but also too, Gary, um, you can still get you know the free the free Canva is still incredibly diversified. So you know you don't necessarily have to have a pro account to achieve what you want to achieve through um, uh, through the. Free, I mean, I for many years I used the free Canva, and the only reason why I mean I don't even have a professional account myself because I uh, it's I, I, it's, it's a process to get one. But another Rotary Club um, in Alabama uh, have a free account, and they've just added me as an extra person to 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 work on their account, which I do a lot of some of my stuff on there too but uh you know you can still achieve a lot of stuff on the free canvas so don't let you know the pro or free put you off you know as with any organization business they want people to go pro because that's how they make their money but you can still do a lot of stuff on the free version so uh, i just i'm sorry i just want to clarify so in the united states a 501c3 is a non-for-profit organization i apologize for using that shortcut um canva has a free um membership so you can use it for free um i don't know what limitations you're experiencing i'm i'm really not i just thought that it may offer more uh usually almost any time that you want to do something particularly if you're doing a download on something you've designed immediately they want to get you over into the pro side which i understand and uh, so I just thought it might give us some capabilities that, uh, but quite frankly, I, 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 the free has been very excellent. So that if you don't have to pay for it, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, there's anyone else has any questions, yes, by all means, just, uh, just press the space bar and pipe in and we'll probably have another 10 or 15 minutes or so, give or take and, and see how we go. 
I have a question. Can we get the PowerPoint presentations emailed to us? Yes, my plan is to give it a look over, make sure that everything looks good. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube account um, and um, I can will happily share a link to that. If you want your own copy to be able to have on your computer, we can work that out too. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're very and welcome. The, re the recording of this presentation too will be made available on uh, on the uh, Melissa's YouTube account or her, the district account and we can certainly that'll be shared around as well so people are able to who missed it who want to uh, watch it again. Thank you. Go ahead, Gary. One last question. How do we get a hold of those great looking glasses that you all wear? <laughs> Go ahead, Evan. Oh, no, I was just going well, hang on. You're talking about me with my, the, the rotary the glasses? Rotary glasses. Yeah. Oh, go on. Oh, for a sec okay. For a second there, Gary, I'm, I'm looking at the screen of who I'm seeing. I'm looking at Drake. I'm looking at Catherine. I'm looking at Tristan. I'm looking at, at Will. And they've all got glasses on. Everyone's wearing, Dave, Andrew, everyone's wearing these glasses. I thought, go to an optometrist. <laughs> I mean, that's where you get your glasses from if you want glasses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, Gary, I didn't quite, uh, I didn't quite get your, your original uh, uh, meaning there. Um, Look, uh, I, I'm one of these very fortunate Rotarians who um, gets sent a lot of kind of merchandise -y stuff to, um, to, to, I don't know, I see it and I ask it and people send it to me. So I think uh, Trish Reedy or somebody or someone else sent me those, those rotary glasses, but I've seen them around and I'm sure there's companies that make them and licensed companies that do it. And um, they're, they're a lot of fun and, um, um, uh, certainly for a different marketing and different events, you know, I've got wearing a Rotorex shirt with the, if you can, two seconds on the back of the, here, hang on one second. See the, um, see that? Oh, I love that phrase. That's my favorite. Yeah, good in the world. It's, you know, the different the rotary pins and all of, you know, I've got all that sort of, all that I've got a rotary we go I've got a rotary a rotary passport so I'm the man with all the rotary merchandise but I get it from various different people and um, uh, lovely people have uh, kind enough to send some of me this stuff and you know if you are a licensee on the call and you want to, me to plug you know send me a t-shirt and I'll happily wear it for you <laughs> but um, um, no I'm just yeah I'd, I'd love it if more people could could sort of get this stuff and I suppose in regards to merchandising we're talking a little bit away from from um, uh, photos but they can be used in the photographs is that you know think about new ways of how we can market rotary and if you if you think those rotary glasses with I love rotary that's a good way of, of uh, helping to add content to your social media feeds it's an interesting type of photos so we need to sort of think about outside the box on how we're promoting rotary and if we're doing things a little bit differently with cool t-shirts or other different sorts of bits and pieces it's a great it's a great um, great effort and I, I did post a video maybe a, a couple of months ago uh, of the rotary t-shirt challenge and I, oh, I remember that yeah I've got about uh, 30 30 rotary t-shirts um, and so I will put them all on and then I film myself taking them all off at super speed and the song background was I'm too sexy for my shirt da, da, da. anyway it's just a crazy idea and uh, and, it, and it went off well but um, yeah sorry I've, so I've gone sidetracked a little bit so. Evan when you get the chance please um post your email in the chat box. Um, people were asking for the contact again. Uh, yep. Um, I'm certainly one of the most easily as found people. If you, if you, um, I've got to be honest, if you want to, um, um, if you want to get in contact with me, the best blessed place would be to send me a message directly to my Rotarian Facebook page as I check that fairly often. Uh, and then, you know, I've, I've put my email address there as well. Uh, oh, I've sent it just to the wrong, wrong person. Um, but uh, yeah, if, I'm very easily contacted. So yeah, there's a, there's a million ways to contact me, but I'll put my email address in here now. Okay, guys, if there's no other questions, um, and yes, I can save the chat as well. Somebody had asked that. Um, but if there's no other questions, then I bid you a wonderful night or morning if you're in Evan's part of the world uh, or afternoon. I'm not sure. <laughs>
So thank you for taking the time to join us. Um, I hope you found this informative. And uh, if we can be of help to you at all, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good job, Evan. That was fun. <laughs> oh, just in time. My puppy's here. Hey, puppy. We can stay on the line, Melissa, for a debrief if you want to. Sure, we could do real quick. I just stopped the recording.